Hello, my name is Mike, and I have Ashton Miss Smith. She wrote a book, and I'm excited to meet her because my friend, Mr. Ray of Louisville, Kentucky, went all the way down to Texas, so she must be somebody special. So I'm here talking to her. So how are you today? You know what? I'm doing great. I, you know, I'm going to share this with people. I'm going to share this interview with folks and great people. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share this so that as many people as possible can, you know, view this. Just, well, I think it's you, great. What are you sharing though? What's the biggest thing you're sharing? Because I think it's- I'm, sh I'm sharing my story. My book today, Swimming Upstream to Realize the Dream. I'm sharing that book, which talks about my story and how I'm, you know, just essentially exploited by Special Olympics. In other words, I don't get paid. And that's the stuff that I'm, able to talk about because I don't make money in their program. I make zero dollars. So you're educating people that don't understand the background stuff that happens during the Olympics, because I don't think the Olympics players get paid either, right? They don't, but they get sponsorships and I don't. I'm in what you call the fake Olympics. Special Olympics is at the very bottom of the totem pole. You have the actual Olympics, Paralympics, and Special Olympics. Special Olympics is, the, is at the bottom. Yeah. Especially swimming, because there was a team, my brother used to coach for a Special Olympics team, and it's called the Rutherford Stringways, Singways, and they had a coach that just dealt with like Special Olympics swim players. Tell me what kind of, what, what, I'm a swimmer, I love swimming. What made you come up with this book? Uh, because I was no longer in Special Olympics and I felt like I was allowed to, when I was in their program, um, I wasn't allowed to talk about books or talk about anything that can make me money off my image and likeness. I'm not allowed to make money in their program. You're not allowed, and this is how, factually, you're not allowed to use any logos, imagery, videos, nothing related to Special Olympics yeah. to raise or make money for yourself outside of the program. You're not even allowed to really tell the public that you're in the program unless it's, you know, you're given permission by a staff. So well, it's things... Why do you uh, why do you feel that they did this to you? Do they do that to everybody in the Olympics, Special Olympics? Yeah, Special Olympics because they think that you're not smart enough and they treat you as if you're not. So but you know, I think you're very smart. You wrote a book. I never wrote a book. I tried to write a book. I don't have the patience. It's very hard. So how did you come up with like what's this book about? Like what does it is about. It is about being able to overcome just the adversities. It's about overcoming that adversity of, you know, of uh, not being able to make money. A book is an asset. And so for me, it is an asset for me. So, uh, yeah. and I want. So I think like an asset, you mean like something that is meaningful to you, right? It's helping an you. An asset is something that the government can say, this particular item can make money for you. Oh. And that's important. Yeah. You know, and you want to have something that generates money for yourself. Yeah. So like I'm a college student. Um, right. Full time right now. Like I don't have any other jobs. And this is like my podcast. It's like that radio, bringing back the radio because you can't, you have vision issues, right? So is your book, on e it's an ebook, right? With your it's a it's I have a paper book and um an ebook for two ninety nine. Wow, that's cheap, I think, and that like it tells your story about how you overcame right. anything more than me, more adversities, more challenges, just because you were perceived as different because you had a label, right? I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, right. How, how do you deal with your mental health with that? Like, I know Michael Way is this beautiful man. He has all this positive energy. I guess you have a lot of positive energy too. I do. I take, you know, for me, counseling is always good. I take, you know, counseling because I've had to have that. I mean, Special Olympics is very stressful. I've had to deal with racism and things in the program and while overcoming my own disability. And, you know, I'm physically fit and very strong and I don't want to be used to make money for people, you know, while trying to overcome that and deal with racism. It's a lot out here in Texas. I'm from Texas, yeah. Special Olympics, um, you know, and I say they support racism because they do nothing about it when it's going on or you bring it up. They say nothing about about it. So yeah. it's it's it's, it's really, really tough.
it's a tough it's a tough subject to touch without politics so i try to avoid that so but i understand what you're seeing because i live i've been in texas i went down to south padre island and you could see it down at the border i was down by brownville right exactly ding 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 i ain't making this stuff up no, exactly no. it's just something that if you're mindful and you practice like these i practice mindfulness and meditation and i practice and i can see my environment more clearly than right I'm, yeah but you you can't you have that you could see more than most people that have eyes right i think you have a more i see i see well enough to have a driver's license so it works for me i can see and do what i need to do i play sports and it hasn't stopped me so so, but why don't you qualify the regular Olympics? Can you qualify for it? Or? I'm, I'm, I'm too old, man. I'm 35 years old. I don't want to do that rigorous training anymore. My body don't respond to that kind of training no more. Yeah, I understand. What, what kind of training you're going through? Like, but not, not right now, but in the past. Like when I was, I was swimming, sir, eight hours a day, five days a week. Like I would go four hours in the morning, take, you know, a break because I, my body needed a break. Then I would come back and work out, you know the rest of the hours and it's it that's how hard it is because you can't do eight hours consecutive straight like that you can't do that yeah that's tough you i don't to, like swimming for eight hours i can't even you have to take a break yeah. you have to do your swimming for four hours and then the other four hours you're doing a lot of weight lifting and working out that kind of stuff yeah i understand that i i'm gonna train for the triathlon i don't like working right. out. yeah it's tough i don't like running swimming and biking <laughs> that's tough but swimming is tough because you're going underwater and then you have to control your breath. So you, when you come out, you have enough energy to breathe, right? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Tell me about your breathing expertise because you have like the better breathing. How can I help myself be a better swimmer? I just like with, with my technique, I'm making sure that my, my head is flat to the water. I'm not lifting my head or nothing to breathe. I'm trying to make sure that my head is flat in the water. And that's for that's for your uh, freestyle, right? That's for freestyle. So you get the most out of your stroke. And a lot of people, they they swim with their hands overlapping. That's not a good way to swim. You want to keep your hands where they're always, uh, you know, width apart, you know, width apart, like, you know, yeah, yeah. less than shoulder width apart. And you just have that nice stroke and keep your head flat to the water, especially sprinters. You don't, you know, you really want to use every advantage that you can to get through the water yeah did you have a trouble learning how to swim like when did you start learning how to swim i started swimming in the 90s the 90s i was born in the 90s so i'm kind of young i'm a youngster <laughs> oh wow uh i was swimming in the 90s uh when i was a kid oh well, that's awesome and you, where did you learn how to swim in elementary school Oh, they have like a pool in elementary school? And at the YMCA, at the YMCA here uh, in Ellis County and walks at you, I learned how to swim there. So, so you're, born in, you're born in Texas and raised in Texas. Yep. So everything's big for you. Everything's big. big yes. Steak, big food, big trucks, big personalities, huh? Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, including warehouses. They got warehouses here as big as eight football fields. Yeah. That's like the, I call that like the transfer state. Because there's a lot of people from Why like, is that? There's a lot of people from like Louisiana that go to like Houston and Dallas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and there's like, I, but I understand why, because after Katrina, it's like, it was dry. And like, but do you feel like that? Was your family from Texas, born and raised? Yeah, my family, they're from Texas. And just, I absolutely, absolutely, you know, like living here in Texas because the cost of living has maintained. Uh, pretty well uh texas could clean up on a lot of things but as far as for opening a business and all of that it's just absolutely fantastic well that's what everybody says that's why joe rogan's down there huh so there you go i mean there is no other state in america that can touch us i mean you got california where you got people fleeing from there everybody come here come to that's texas so, that's so funny because what's his name? There's a lot of Dallas. Who's owns the Dallas Tex, uh, the Dallas Mavericks? Was that uh... Mark Cuban? Yeah, and he's not from Texas, I don't think. I don't think he's born and raised in Texas. I don't think so either. But he said he likes it here. I think a lot of people like it down there. I like it as well. I don't like the heat because being a new he's from PA. He's a northerner. 
But that's the thing. Once people find what's some- wrong with the heat? Why don't you like the heat? I don't like it cold. I was shivering when I went to New York City. I about died. I was like, this is crazy. See, that's I the was- thing. That's like everybody that comes from the south up here is like, oh, it's always cold. But for me, like when it's 60s, it's like I was in Galveston, Texas, working on the beach job in Galveston. And the snow, like the windstorm comes like, Mike, why are you wearing a t-shirt? It's like, oh, it's still 70. And everybody's wearing jackets and bundled up. It was just like, my body's different, I guess. We're warm blooded up here. Well, <laughs> and I would say, I would say, I don't wear a jacket when it's 70 degrees. The only time I wear a jacket is when it's in the 30s. So oh, yeah. I know, I, yeah, I don't wear a jacket when it's in the 70s and stuff. I wear a jacket like when it got down to two degrees here, I got so scared. Dude, okay. we scared. With was, no power, no lights for five days. That was two. That was like the beginning. How long ago was that? That was like recent, though. That that was in February. That was bad, and that's one of the months I'll never forget because on my birthday, on my birthday, it turned out to be clear enough for me to go eat at an IHOP on my birthday. I had to go to IHOP on my birthday. Couldn't go bowling. Couldn't do anything else. It was bad. Everything was shut down. It was bad. So you went to IHOP instead of Waffle House? Uh, the Waffle House, they uh, they had a line. It was long. It was a very, very long line. I like Waffle House. We we I like Waffle House too. I go there too. And I go to this place called Old Old Pancake House. Oh my God. Oh uh, the That's place. Funny. That's so funny. Anyway, it's, um it's awesome. The the pancakes of Texas be like they I'm swear to God you come to Texas they give you so much food on your plate they gave my friend enough food for two people yeah I went to a steakhouse in Ruby um, in Ruby Texas I went to a steakhouse they gave me this big steak for my birthday I was by myself because I was traveling and they gave me this big steak I was like I don't want this much but I ate the whole thing <laughs> but I didn't work out then so now I work out and I... wow you know and see that's what I'm saying steak. Texas, there's nobody, nobody nowhere that can cook uh, steaks and chicken and poultry like Texas. They might beat us in the fish department, shrimp department. Texas is not known for that. Texas will tell you we are known for beef here. Oh, yeah, that barbecue style stuff is so amazing. Right. Oh, yeah, right. there's no barbecue because Texas has more. I think Louisiana has more cows than they used to. But Texas, I was driving from South Padre all the way to Mobile. I saw so many cows, and that was the only thing that was there, cows. Right. <laughs> cows through San Antonio, and that's amazing. Right. But, okay, let me get back to the podcast. You write, you wrote this right, book. sorry. You wrote this book. I and did. It, and I'm, like, happy about it because I don't know how to write a book. How long is the book? Like, it's, like, it's a secret. It's about, it's, about, it's about 30 pages, 30, 40 pages, just a starter book, and then we'll pick up steam because with the pandemic, like, I had to, you know, commercial publishers a lot of times will take your story and give you a ghostwriter and let you tell your story. That's oh. what they will do. Okay. Yeah. So like Mike Tyson wrote his own book. I think he published it maybe by himself, but his book was really good, honestly. But right. this is like your first chapter to your new life, your new general right. journey. We're following your journey to whatever you wanted to be. You know, there's no And end. my journey is going to be, I want to be a motivational speaker. And I'm also hoping to start a business called Golden Ashton. LLC. And so once that gets up and running, we'll be able to start making money and start uh, getting stuff in the door. Well, it's not about getting money. I think it's about helping others by still telling your story, though. Right? It's not all about money. Well, that too, but I still, you know, I live in an apartment. I have bills to pay. You know, I don't live oh, with yeah, my yeah, parents. Yeah. Or, you know, so I have to pay bills here. We have, you know, I have to pay water, you know, lights, stuff like this. So I want to have money to pay my bills. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, you're on the call me, sir. I'm just Mike. It's so much easier. There's so many, like, every Southern person I met, and, like, it's not, like, anything bad. They say, call me sir. It's like, I'm Mike. That's all I am. I have no degree, no, like, no education. Like, I have high school, and I have some college credits, but it's like, just call me Mike. It's easier. But um, my last thing is, what's your next journey after this book sells in 72 hours? My, my, my next journey, really, is just to take this book and push it on social media, really uh, get the paperwork done to finish getting my business and stuff registered with the state of Texas. And then I'm hoping to get on stage. I'm hoping to work with a company that can get me leads and opportunities. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. 
there's a lot of things that we have in common because I'm trying to do that with a lot of veterans over here, but it's about helping everybody, not just my group of people. I'm not a veteran. I just like working with people like anybody, you know? So Why? there you go. Right. Me too. <laughs> so, okay. So what can we do to support you besides buy the book? Like follow you on social certainly media? Certainly tell. Yeah. Certainly follow me on social media, tell people my story and anybody you know, buy the book that because that goes to pay my bills, those type of things. And that's important. And the biggest thing is just telling my story and getting it to the right people that can hear it. That's, that's what has to happen. So I'm about to like, pause this, I, I stopped the recording midway. I just want to say thank you for okay. coming. Because I really, yeah. I really appreciate you coming and talking to me. And yeah. I will post everything she does on this link and you can follow her on Instagram and LinkedIn because this is not drop it. Drop me the link. Give me the link. If I'm a, if I'm a follow her, just drop the link so I can follow you back. Of course. Anything for you. I'm here for you. Hey Ken, did you want me to give you that? But yeah, we'll, we'll. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, what yeah, we'll so, do. So what we will do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say what we will do is really try to get this thing going and really get this book pushed out there. I'm so, so excited. No, I was asking somebody, did they want this uh, card that was in my hand? Oh, no, no, no. I paused that, that section. So um, okay. my last thing is, um, thank you for coming. I appreciate everything you you're doing. Like, it's a good story. It's not like, I'm just trying to tell your story. And, and like share it with Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell let him know too. And he said he'll share it on his, he'll share it on his platform. Oh, yeah. 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 He's a good guy. He listens to me a lot. So I appreciate you coming you and talking to you me. You too.